Why do spearfishers use smooth skin wetsuits? Ho oh, ho, that's why. Welcome back to the channel guys, my name is Daniel Mann and in this video I'm going to show you exactly why spearfishers prefer to use a smooth skin wetsuit over a conventional scuba or surfing type wetsuit. If you go to any big competition in Europe, you're more than likely going to see the top guys in a smooth skin wetsuit. Guys like Janus Sedaris, Giacomo de Mola, Johan Nielsen, Mati Puka, Kim Yatin, George Vassiliou, Guy Lemem, the list goes on. They're all wearing smooth skin wetsuits. To understand why they're using wetsuits like this, we first have to understand how wetsuits are made and the other types of wetsuits available. Wetsuits are made from a material called neoprene, which is like a type of rubber, but it's very good at insulating your body from the cold water that you dive in. Unfortunately, by itself, raw neoprene is really fragile. When neoprene sheets are made, they pour an entire slab of neoprene about this thick and then they'll cut it up into the various thicknesses. Then the manufacturers get a nylon jersey glued onto either side of that just like this glove here, and that provides the strength to the neoprene so it doesn't tear and rip so easily. So you can see here, this glove is manufactured like that. It's got a nylon inside, nylon outside, and it's pretty tough. You can't break it very easily, and the plus side is you can stitch the seams together. Unfortunately, the stitching often goes through on the inside as well, and when you wear these type of wetsuits, they will kind of irritate your body a little bit. I've found that behind the knees, under the armpits, when you've got stitching on the inside of a wetsuit can cause really bad rashes. When I was in Tonga, one person was basically bleeding after three days from an ill-fitting wetsuit that had stitching on the inside. Not fun at all. Surfing and scuba wetsuits are typically made with a double-lined neoprene. The problem with that is the neoprene can stretch as far as it wants until it breaks, but with the nylon on there, it's really restricted and it's not nearly as comfortable and flexible. You can see here it, it gets to a point and it stops. Enter the open cell wetsuit. Now an open cell wetsuit is raw neoprene, so it has just raw neoprene on the inside of it, and on the outside it has the nylon jersey. This solves two problems. It solves the problem of having the stitching on the inside of the wetsuit, and it's also much warmer because this sticks to your skin a lot better than nylon and doesn't let the water in through it nearly as much. The other good thing is you can still stitch the suit together, so it's really tough. However, it's, it's still not quite as stretchy as a unlined suit. So if you get this raw neoprene material like this, look how far this stretches. This is this is like a rubber band. And then you get the same stuff in nylon. It, it, it just doesn't stretch as far. You can see this piece here, if you get the wrong direction, it only stretches a little bit before it maxes out. So the way that the nylon is stitched together, kind of like a stocking, it pulls really good in one direction, not in the other. So the suit's just not going to be as comfortable and as flexible as it could be if it was just raw neoprene. So what's the big problem with having a wetsuit made like this? Sure, it's not quite as comfortable as a raw neoprene wetsuit, but it is super strong and comfortable, fairly bulletproof, stitched on the outside. It, there's nothing wrong with it, really. The problem is they stay wet. Now, if you're familiar with the effect called evaporative cooling, you will know that stuff that's wet with wind chill gets really cold. So kind of like when you jump out of a pool and the wind's blowing, it's bloody freezing. Or when you get out of your wetsuit at the end of the day, you're wet and the wind blows, you're freezing. So these wetsuits stay wet. When you're in the boat, the wind's blowing, you're driving, the evaporative cooling effect cools down the wetsuit and in turn it cools you down, which is kind of the opposite effect that you're wearing the wetsuit for in the first place. Enter the smooth skin wetsuit. When neoprene is made, it is made in a big block and the top and the bottom parts of the block of neoprene are what we call the smooth skin sections. So they cut this whole block up into various thicknesses like the little sheets like this, three, five, seven, nine mil, 12 mil sometimes as well. But the top and the bottom layer have this smooth effect on them. It's still raw neoprene, but it's not sticky like the open cell stuff. You can see this open cell stuff here. It's quite sticky, got a lot of friction on it, the smooth stuff. Really nice, really smooth, as the name implies. A smooth skin wetsuit is fantastic. They are super warm and extremely comfortable because they're very flexible. The water wicks away off the top and it doesn't stay wet when you're in the boat. This one particularly has a nylon outer section down here around the beaver tail, because this is an area of high wear, so they want a little bit more strength. That's why they've made it like this. Now, if you look at this thermal image, you can see this exact jacket. The top here, when you wet it down straight away, it's the same temperature as the rest of the suit down near the bottom. Give it a few minutes though, you can see that the smooth skin section at the top has the water evaporated off it. It is far warmer than the part down the bottom, which is the nylon outside, which is still wet, 
and cooling you down. As I mentioned, the caveat with a smooth skin wetsuit is that it is raw neoprene and it is quite fragile, so you can rip it easily. However, they are unmatched in warmth and comfort. Personally, I wouldn't use a smooth skin wetsuit in three or five millimeters. They're just far too fragile, far too easy to put your fingers through them. I know some people do dive with those, particularly performance freedivers, because they are the best that they can get, but you're going to have to carry a tube of wetsuit glue around with you because that's what you'll be doing most of the time because they are so easy to rip. I've used this seven mil jacket for the past four years and I've ripped it twice. Once here when I was getting really lazy at the start of a dive down at Brighton, I didn't have enough lube with me to lube on the wetsuit and I just, ripped it too hard and put a hole there. The other time was when I was trying to get it on in the shower, also without lube, and I ripped under the armpit when I pulled down like this. So it's my own fault, but if you look after them and lube them up properly, there isn't normally a problem. I've tried using seven mil wetsuits that are lined on the outside. They are far too stiff for any sort of comfort level. That's why I opt for the smooth skin in the seven and the nine and a half. Actually, if you tried to use a nine and a half mil jacket with the nylon outside like this, you would just be like Michelin man. You, you wouldn't be able to move well at all. So that's that's why I use those style of suits. This is why you'll also see a lot of European divers using them because the water is a lot cooler and you have to use seven mil suits quite regularly in Europe, in the Mediterranean as well. In the Northern parts, you're using 10 mil suits, nine mil suits. So it'd be simply impossible and uncomfortable to use a regular lined wetsuit in those thicknesses. This isn't a Polo Sub ad and they haven't sponsored this video in any way, but the innovation that they've come up with to solve the smooth skin issue in the thinner suits is called the Forza Tray or the Force 3, which means it is a sandwich type material. Material. You can see here, it's smooth skin on the outside, but there's stitching on it. So when they make it, they take the open cell neoprene, they put this nylon here in the middle, and then they put smooth skin on the outside. So you get the nice comfort of the open cell on the inside, you get the benefits of the smooth skin on the outside, but it gets stitched together. So the suit is extremely tough. So you can see here, there's no way you'd be doing this with a regular smooth skin suit. You know, I can't put my finger through that. Open cell on the inside, smooth skin outside. The only problem with this is it's still got the layer of nylon in between it, so they're not quite as flexible, but in three and five mil, they're the best things that I've put on my body for spearfishing. Probably wouldn't use it in the seven mil. I've got a friend that has one in the seven and eight mil, I think, and it's, it's pretty stiff on him. So again, it's just like another nylon outside wetsuit, but you don't get the benefits because it's still stiff. So you might as well just go a smooth skin after seven mil. After all that, which is the best wetsuit for you? If you're doing a lot of shore diving, I would probably stick to a regular open cell nylon outside wetsuit. They're tough as nails. They're very comfortable, great value for money. Or if you've got a little bit more money to spend, you could go one of the sandwich type wetsuits so you get the benefit of the smooth skin. And if you're doing boat diving, the sandwich material with the smooth skin on the outside keeps you far warmer in the boat. Or if you're diving in really cold stuff, straight smooth skin jacket in the seven or the nine mil, really great wetsuits. So. There you have it. I hope you got something out of this video, guys. If you like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you aren't already, and I will see you on the next one.